bouncing back and forth. But if you turn to the Gospel of John chapter 12, John chapter 12, now also, by the way, on your phone, at least the on mine, you, you Google it up, just put John 12. We're going to read beginning with verse 20 and read down through verse 33. John chapter 12, verse 20, we'll begin reading in a moment. But my subject this morning, I've entitled This World versus the one to come. This world or this age versus the one to come. In John chapter 12, familiar scripture, we'll begin with verse 20. There were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. And the same came therefore to Philip, which was a Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Jesus answered them saying, the hours come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life, or life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said, that it thundered. Others said, an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And this he said signifying what death he should die. Our Lord was foretelling his uh, approaching death and it was right at hand. And the price that he was going to pay. But here Jesus speaks of life and death even his own death. <coughs> I read a story some years ago. History records this, that John Owen, an English, Englishman and a preacher, was private chaplain to Oliver Cromwell in 1649. He was also vice chancellor of Oxford University from 1652 to 1657. On John Owen's deathbed, with his secretary writing for him, writing to a friend, 
He instructed his secretary to write, I am still in the land of the living. Then he said, stop. Change that. To say, I am yet in the land of the dying. But I hope soon to be in the land of the living. But we're in the land of the dying right now. Even our Lord was speaking of his own death and the importance of it. As he said, and if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. When he paid that price of his own life's blood on the cross, he earned the right to be our judge and our Savior. We're talking about dying a moment. We're not going to get out of this world without dying. I read my brother-in-law's brother who passed away uh, this morning. I read it on the Obed page. John Wayne Bridges, he gave the uh, date which was Thursday of his death of this week. And then it said he died unexpectedly. Most people don't expect to die, do they? He had an aortic aneurysm. He died in his sleep. And as my niece said to me yesterday, she said, boy, good for him. If you got to go, that's the way to go. Just get on out of here. There's no if we gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> I want you to think about that a moment. Some years ago, they had a sign up here on a funeral home on the East Texas Freeway, the Splendora. To be specific, Rosewood Funeral Home had a sign out on the highway. says, drive carefully. We can wait. Think about that. Let that sink in. We can wait. It's still going to be the same function, isn't it? I haven't seen one in a long time, and I had heard that people... Uh, Resented it so much. But Batesville Casket Company out of Batesville, Arkansas have trucks that deliver caskets to uh, wherever they need to go, funeral home and what have you. But they had so many complaints about it, I, I, don't, I haven't seen one in a good while. I think they've withdrawn what they said. But they print on the back of the big truck from Batesville Funeral Home says, drive carefully, yours may be on this load. A lot of people got offended at that and they called and protested. People don't like to think about death. Years ago, I was a, a foreman in a foundry we ran a foundry there and, and the Nacogdoches at Northern Indiana Brass Company. I worked for them like 70 years. But one of the fellows found him a good fishing vehicle and up in East Texas everybody fished. But he bought a used hearse. That we could camp out, put all of his stuff in it. And he parked it on that parking lot. The blacks protested. They came and said they didn't want that sitting on the parking lot. Because they don't like to think about death.
few years ago, I was over here off Little York, and there's a lady who came over and wanted me to write up a policy, burial policy for her mother. We did so. We picked out a casket for her, and we said to her, now here's a picture of the casket. Oh, I don't want to see it. Didn't want to see a picture of the casket they're going to put her mother, mother's body in. Because people don't like to entertain the thought of death, do they? Linda's mother. did her funeral plans before she passed away and she had a picture of the casket and she wanted to show Linda and the other kids. She was proud of it. But they declined, they didn't want to see. Mother, we don't want to see that. <laughs> because people don't like to talk about death and dying. Well, that's the case. But I'm here to tell you today that you have an appointment. My wife doesn't know it yet or not, but she made an appointment this next week for the doctor. And she must have given my phone number because they called me a little bit, bit ago wanting to confirm an appointment that she has. And I'm supposed to type a Y or a yes to respond to the doctor's we all have an appointment it's appointed unto men once to die Amen. but after this the judgment not twice but once, there is a second death. The Lord said, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such a second death hath no power. Folks, the second death is the one you don't want to experience. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, you won't have to because of him. We have the best doctors, the best technology ever. I was at the eye doctor, Linda and I was this week and I've been having a little problem with the eyes. The doctor said to me in Linda's presence, look like we're gonna have to get a cornea specialist and do a little scraping on the eyeball. Scrape a set of skin off for, for some more. We live in a day of modern technology, don't we? They can extend your life, but you can't miss that appointment. Still gonna die. I'm thankful for medical technology they have that can uh, ease the pain, but you still can't get around that fact that you're gonna die. Somewhere. Some way, all of us will keep that appointment. I see people accumulating a lot of the world's goods. I saw yesterday they were they did something to honor Bob McNair, the fellow that began the. Houston Texans football team and owned it. He was a billionaire. But last year he kept that appointment, didn't he? He 
and he didn't take the Houston Texans with him. As a matter of fact, how much did he take with him? Big old zero. Absolutely nothing. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Brother and Ricky did a wonderful job yesterday in presentation of our seminar on soul winning. And after it was over, I shared with him uh, something that you know already. But we said that eternity, and this is wrong, folks. I've said it many, many times, but it's a wrong statement. Eternity is a long time. Just the opposite. Eternity is without time. It's from now on. No changing. Folks, that's why what you do, what you speak, what you say, or whatever, you do it for all eternity. You can't change your actions. You can't change what you said. It's eternal. For that reason, it's best to get it right the first time, isn't it? Life is too brief to play with it. James said, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanishes away. Job said, man that's born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. The Lord said, in sorrow shall you eat of the dust of the earth until you return to it. I'm here to tell you this morning that this life is a dressing room for all eternity. You've got to get it right. Either the Lord meant what he said, it's either fact or fiction. And folk, if, if it's fiction, we're in trouble because we have no hope other than through Christ. He is our hope. It's either black or white, isn't it? No gray. Either the Lord said something or he didn't. But this life, again, is where we dress for eternity. We can put on life, and we do that by committing our life to the Lord Jesus Christ or accepting what he's done for us. Or we can reject Christ. We get to choose. But folks, remember your choice is forever. Jesus spoke of his own death in verse 24. If you look back there at that scripture we read a moment ago. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat 
fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And he was the grain of wheat that was about to be planted, was it not? He was about to be put to death. Verse 32, he spoke of the cross and the resurrection. He proclaimed that all men would be brought before him. All men. Whether they be great or whether they be slave, they'll be brought before their maker, our maker, and our savior. Jesus laid his life down that we might have life. He said, they don't take my life from me. I'm going to let them do it. But I'm going to lay my life down. And if I lay it down, I have power to take it up again. We're going to get to live forever, ever, and ever. <coughs> the one that loved us, made us in his own image, and then died for our sins. Folk, I'm going to say it again. The Lord doesn't require double payment, does he? Christ, if his own blood was good enough for the Father, it should be good enough for us. 